Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and this is the second game that I've played recently with Dmang17. And I'm playing Free Peoples again. This time we're giving me two action tokens because we think that's generally the right balance for the base game. Though I'd love to know in the comments if you use action tokens to use one or two and what do you think is a good balance. In this game, this is our this is our rematch. We'll see how I do this time. My opponent allocated one eye and did not roll any more, and you can see I got a great start, so this is this is really good. Three movement against only one one eye is nice, and I have quite a few options available to me, so we'll see how it goes. And my opponent's roll is good too. This is perfectly nice to have two musters. And let's see, oh, early Palantir, so this is nice. And Shadows Gather. All right. I didn't get particularly playable cards. These are not playable cards early, so that's that's slightly worse for this uh, Will of the West, but we'll see, see how it starts. Okay, so I start off by passing. My opponent gets Isengard to war. That obviously makes sense, and then starts moving armies around. I move the Fellowship, and I'm safe on that move, which makes sense because it's only one die. More army movements, and then I move a second time, also safe, which is reasonably good because, you know, that's about what you'd expect. All right, so my opponent makes this move towards the elves. And I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, Sauron is not yet at war, but can get to war with this with this die. And, you know, I, I think... So last game, they played a move where they moved a uh, regular to northern Rovanian and this army to Daggerlad, and then they did the move three using using Shadows Gather to go from Daggerlad all the way to Northern R Rovanian. So it can really jumpstart the attack in the north. And, you know, I don't know that they have Shadows Gather at this point, but I don't really want to press my third movement 50% chance right into Moria. I have other useful things that I can do with this Will of the West. One thing that I'm thinking about, if I had lost Gandalf, then maybe I could have gotten him back with this if Saruman showed up. But my opponent is wisely waiting to to get Saruman with this with this muster. So they're seeing what I'm going to do. I use. I decide that you know what, if I use this muster, this will of the West, and the token. For, gaunt, for um, political action, I can get the elves all the way to war. And then that will give me two actions at the start of next turn to muster Woodland Realm twice. Assuming I get two musters next turn, which is not guaranteed, but it's about what you'd expect. You expect about half musters. So if I get two musters next turn, then I can get Woodland Realm up to three elites, which will really defend it successfully. You know, I don't know that Shadows Gather is coming, but either way, I want to put up a good defense of the Woodland Realm. It does mean that the Witch King can come earlier by getting the Elves to war so soon, and I have to be careful about depleting the pool for the Elves, but I think it's worth it. So that's what I go for. I start by using my token... Ah, uh, sorry. I start by just using a regular muster, and, then, and now my opponent can safely get Saruman. So maybe I could have been a little more clever if I had decided that up front. Maybe I could have used a token there. That, that actually would be a minor improvement. If I know that I'm doing getting the elves to war, use the token there. Then my opponent, if my opponent gets Saruman with that action, then I'm able to move with the fellowship and then potentially get Gandalf turn one, which would be amazing. Now... I think if I had done that, maybe my opponent would have saved this muster. But, okay. Anyway, I go ahead and advance the elves again. And my opponent is thinking about, you know, what to do. I think their plan was to play Palantir. But I saved this Will of the West. It's always good to save Wills of the West when there's no threat of Day Without Dawn. So, I mean, if you don't have anything better to do with it, if you don't need them, then all things being equal, save it to keep your options open. So, so I have this Will of the West here, and if they played Palantir right here, I certainly would use this Will of the West to get rid of it. So instead, they decide to draw a strategy card, which I think makes sense. All right, and I go ahead and get the elves all the way to war. And 
you know, I'm expecting a turn two Witch King. I don't love that, but I definitely like a well-defended Woodland Realm. So I drew Scouts, which is great because I already am planning on getting Woodland Realm defended. If I can also get a Northern unit in there, I'm going to, it's going to be a bunch of free musters for the North, which is nice. And since I already have a nation at war, it doesn't hurt any to get more nations at war. Uh, certainly at this point in the game, I'm happy with that. So my opponent draws Swarm of Bats, though. So I drew Scouts the same turn that my opponent drew Swarm of Bats. Now, to be fair, they did draw an extra strategy card. And because of that strategy card draw, it just gave them an extra chance at Swarm of Bats, which I think is really nice if you're heading north like this and you haven't made it to Old Forest Road yet. So that's good. Shadow has two Swarm of Bats in their deck, and Free People have three Scouts in their decks. So you know, better chances for free, but my opponent drew more cards. One eye rolls three more, and I get another Will of the West. And I'm happy to see this, right? There's a good chance, some chance I can get Gandalf right here. And I got my two musters, which is what I wanted. Because that muster was used for uh, Saruman, which obviously makes sense, um, I know that I have at least two actions, actually three actions, before the Woodland Realm is besieged. So I can use one muster into Woodland Realm, a second action army movement to get a regular into Old Forest Road, and then my third action can be mustering again in Woodland Realm. Now, I also ideally want to get Gandalf this turn, so I kind of want to move once and see if I get hit or not, because if I get hit and I lose Gandalf, then I want to be able to spend my Will of the West on Gandalf, probably, and not necessarily getting a fifth unit into Woodland Realm. So that's my plan. I want to use these actions quickly because I want to get the information about Gandalf to know whether or not that's, that will that second will of the West needs to go to Gandalf or not. So I start off by mustering Woodland Realm. I'm definitely going to do that. Go ahead and start with that. My opponent then musters the uh, Sauron to war. And now I have a choice. Do I want to just muster a reg uh, an elite into Woodland Realm again, or do I want to get an army there now uh, from the north? into Old Forest Road. Now, my thinking is my opponent probably doesn't have Swarm of Bats yet. And while I'd rather an elite than a regular, I'm also a little worried about depleting the Elven reinforcement pool because the Elven reinforcement pool is so small. So, and at some point, I probably want to muster the North to war. So I want to go ahead and get my unit in there. And I need to get this unit from Iron Hills into Erebor anyway at some point. So I'll go ahead and do it now while I have this army muster. So I use an army movement i reinforce those the the north and then my opponent plays this move and that is great for me i mean it's not great that they're going to have a giant army on my doorstep but it is good for me because it gives me a uh, time to move with the fellowship and see if gandalf is getting hit or not so <clears throat> they go ahead and do this, and I think it's right that they that they do this because this should be enough. You know, they're bringing in a good a good sizable army. They can at least get one stronghold, and they've already invested time going up there. And the elves are already at war, so might as well might as well go for it. So I think all this makes sense. So I go ahead and move. Right, this is my whole plan, and my opponent misses. So on one hand, I'm happy to be missed going into Moria. On the other hand, you know, getting Gandalf is good, turn two. Um, but I'll be able to use that. I'll be able to use that Will of the West to muster, and that's fine. So my opponent plays Shadows Gather. That's obviously what we expected. And now they attack Dale. And <clears throat> that's going to put the North one away from war. And I'm thinking that's great because I'll be able to get my leader and a regular into northern into Woodland Realm or into Erebor. We'll see. But they have Swarm of Bats. So great play of Swarm of Bats there. Um, and they get the hit and eliminate my unit. So that was I think that was really well played on their part. This is great, efficient movement. Yes, I'm going to manage to muster, but they managed to 
you know, get two sizable armies up there. All right, and now here they they don't get the Witch King, and instead they attack Wilden Realm. What do you think about that? I mean, that's that's an interesting choice. I do like getting it under siege before it's full. On the other hand, if I deplete, if I go that low in the Elven Pool, that definitely puts Lorien or Rivendell, you know, at risk. So, I mean, I would do it. It's it's definitely worth it, but they can always switch. They can always switch to Erebor, right? They could, if I muster a fifth unit into Woodland Realm before they've besieged it, then they can just say, okay, fine, and go on to go on to Erebor. So, I don't know. I I would be tempted to get get the Witch King, but this is this is really a tough call. So I'm curious in the comments, what would what would you do here? Would you get the Witch King to get the extra dice, or would you besiege Woodland Realm to avoid? it getting too, too big. All right. So that's what they did. And again, they, they waited on the Palantir. Um, I think because I didn't have a, I, I had a will of the West showing. So again, they waited on the, on playing the Palantir of thing because they didn't want to make it too easy for me to get rid of it. And, you know, this, this is really just a painful role for, the free people player, right? I want to get over Moria. I want to get past Moria. I want to kill off Gandalf. I want to keep making progress with the fellowship. There's only one eye in the hunt box. And, um, you know, that's just bad. The one saving grace is I got three Palantirs with Gandalf still as guide. So I am going to get to cycle quite a few cards. And... All right, so my opponent, I, I start by playing Guards of the Citadel. Why do I do that? Because I want to play that card. It's great to be able to reinforce Gondor um, in advance of Gondor getting to war. But I want to cycle into new <clears throat> new strategy cards. Maybe I can get three Anduil's Archers, right? I mean, it's not great chances, but I am going to get to draw three times. So I might as well, I might as well try. If I can. And Dane Ironfoot's guard would be great. You know, so cycling into more strategy cards at this point is good. But I draw the power of Tom Bombadil. You know, that's okay. It can let me get the North to war, but I don't know that it matters that much. And then my opponent gets to bring bring the um these armies right here. And if and, and that is also a great play because if they hadn't done that, I could have played the power of Tom Bombadil to get the North to war and then use this muster to muster a unit in Carrick. Just just to cause trouble. But because they did that move right now, even if I get the North to war with something like Wisdom and Belrond or the power of Tom Bombadil, they can still take Carrick. So I think I think that was also a very well timed very well timed move, and they start getting the the South Rounds ready for at some point Corsairs. Have they already drawn Corsairs? No, they haven't drawn Corsairs, but but they're getting ready and going to West Rondor isn't bad either. So And they have two musters if they need to to get um the South Rounds to war. And it's particularly nice if they manage to draw a day without dawn. So Alright. I go ahead and keep playing my cards. This time I play Axe and Bow because it doesn't make sense to waste the it, power of Tom Bombadil really won't have any true effect because they're clearly going to take Carrick anyway and protecting the Shire is okay, but I'd rather play Axe and Bow. That's actually, you know, that can protect, that's worth a corruption and also can protect from a foul thing from the deep that only does one. All right, so, and drawing character cards isn't bad either. All right, I got Elven Rope, so it's good to have another another playable card if I need it. And my opponent musters... Oh, uh, sorry, moves. So that's a movement. Yeah, I think that makes sense to do an army movement. And they got this army ready in minus Morgul. Yeah, okay, that seems fine. I think also getting maybe the, if you're planning on getting the South Runes into the game, why not? And it seems like you're attacking up north. Why not get South Rune to East Rune? Maybe they're waiting to, 
get some mustering. Yeah. It's not it's not entirely clear what what to be doing there, but yeah, it's not it's not bad, right? This this can definitely do something at some point. All right. So, they muster a regular Indol Golder and a regular amount Gundabad. Now, I think they're doing that because they intend to attack Old Forest Road. And in case I have a second scout, I wouldn't be able to just march this north this north unit right into Dolgolder. So that is actually a pretty clever play. It's it's a little cautious, but I but I like it. It's a, it's actually really smart and. You're doing fine on time, right? The fellowship is just not moving that fast. I only have four dice. You know, the only thing, just to think about that a second more, the only thing is you don't really need to deal with that guy right now, right? I don't think you do. I don't know. Maybe you do, but I like that muster for the Witch King. You know, if I could get the Witch King this turn and then start attacking into Woodland Realm or just get these guys into position, I don't know. You, you do, you, I understand the point. You do want to attack into Old Forest Road. Maybe that's some argument for leaving one behind from Dol Golder at the beginning. I don't know. You really want to move everybody in. This is a great example of this unit in Old Forest Road just causing trouble, right? He, he's going to end up getting killed, you know, almost certainly. But he is he did just waste a pretty important muster from Shadow. Um, I think maybe I would value the Witch King higher. I would try and attack into Old Forest Road and then... If they scouts in, then okay, I have to turn around and, and take over Dol Golder. But the chances of having a second scouts this early in the game, even with my card draw, is pretty low. So, okay. So now that my opponent has uh, made these safe, they attack into Old Forest Road. And obviously that's, that's great. That makes total sense. And then they've very thoughtfully timed this for Palantir of Orthanc. So I think that's just, I mean, I, I think it's a great play. I don't have a Will of the West now. They really patiently saved it. They do have a Palantir to play. I'm, you know, as the Free People's player, I, I was really thinking about spending a ring to move. And now I'm thinking, ah, maybe I need to spend a ring to get rid of the Palantir. And if I do it this turn, then... Next turn, I will be able to potentially kill off Gandalf and use my Will of the West for Gandalf. So we'll see what I end up doing. I, I end up playing Elven Rope because it's good to cycle cards. And if I'm going to move, and I think maybe I haven't even decided yet, if I'm going to move, then I'd rather play my card first in case Gandalf gets hit, though obviously with only a single die, it's relatively unlikely. All right, I let my opponent get one free draw, and that's not great, but I didn't want to spend a Will of the West, I mean a ring at that point. And maybe I'm going to maybe I'm gonna, I'm going to roll a bunch of Wills of the West next round. I get Gondor to war because I'm going pretty slowly with the Fellowship. I want to make sure that I put up a strong defense. I want to make sure that Dol Golder, I mean that uh, Dol Emroth can defend itself with musters because I'm using up the elven pool to defend itself. So even if I draw Cairdon's ships at some point, I need to be prepared um, for, for Dol Amroth to defend itself. I want to save, I want to save these remaining units to defend, to defend Lorien or Rivendell in case my opponent goes that way. Though obviously at the moment they don't, they don't seem to be going that way, but Shadows on the Misty Mountain or Orcs Multiplying Again or New Power is Rising, all of those things can lead to attacks coming toward Lorien pretty quickly. All right, so I get Gondor to war. It's nice. It's the best way to defend against Corsairs. And, oh, um, sorry, not not um, two war, but one, one away from war. I want to be prepared. Um, I'm thinking about that. Okay, sorry about that. And then my opponent moves in. 
and you know, I'm going to end up discarding a card. I think it makes sense for them to get their full contingent ready. Maybe you could have attacked once without it, but I think it's better to get the extra leadership. You're going to get the Witch King next round, so all that's good. I'm obviously hoping to draw roll a Will of the West here, um, and I get I get some great cards. I'm happy to see the Red Arrow. The Red Arrow is, you know, just it's like two and a half dice worth of actions. You get to advance Rohan towards war, and you get uh, one and a half points of musters, one and a half dice worth of musters, and also it scouts. So in case an attack comes quickly from, or think I, I can use scouts to help keep these guys alive. All right, so all right, my opponent allocates two eyes because I'm going through. I'm about to go through Moria. Obviously, that's a little risky if you roll too many eyes, but it can also pay off. And I roll a single movement and no Will of the West. So obviously, I really wanted to roll the Will of the West to be able to get Gandalf or to be able to get rid of the Palantir. Um, I think if I had rolled a Will of the West, my plan probably would have been to use a ring to get rid of the Palantir of Orthanc and then move and try and kill off Gandalf. So, but I did draw wizard staff. So part of me is thinking, okay, you know, I would like on one hand to kill off Gandalf, but since I didn't roll a will of the West anyway, I'll keep him around. And therefore the first thing that I do is get rid of the Palantir because the Palantir of Orthanc, because my opponent has rolled two Palantirs. So that's a pretty easy choice. I don't want to give two more free card draws, and I don't have a tough decision with Wills of the West anyway. So that goes. I decide to keep the muster because I think that the Witch King is coming into play, and I want to be able to get Gondor to war in advance of Corsairs. I just want to be out ahead of that problem. All right. I... You know, I, I could have also, the other thing to consider is maybe I could have had saved that Palantir because Gandalf is still going to be guide for sure because I'm going to play Wizard Staff. And maybe I want to use that to play a second card. Um, and particularly Red Arrow, I could play, which I like, but I might need it for scouts and... Yeah, I figured if I need to, I can just play it with a muster, I'm going to be replacing cards anyway. So, I don't know. It's a little tricky. I think I was more worried about Gondor. I felt like Rohan could be okay for a while, but may maybe that, and, and so therefore the muster would give me flexibility to get Gondor to war. Um, oh, I think I was also worried about like a quick attack on, on Lorien. There, I mean, there are not that many, there are not that many dice here for Shadow to, to do things, but there could be like Shadows on Misty Mountain. Yeah, I don't know. I, th I think I wanted to save it for, for mustering in case there were some threats that were coming towards, towards Shadow, uh, towards the Elves or towards Gondor. All right, so my opponent plays New Powers Rising. Obviously, that's a great card. I play Wizard Staff. I'm perfectly happy to get to keep drawing more character cards. At some point, I'm thinking if things continue to go really slowly, I'm going to be able to separate Strider and, and crown him and leave Gandalf in the, in the um, Fellowship. Now, I did draw Athelos, so I kind of want... I, I really would prefer to kill off Gandalf at this point now that I've gotten Wizard Staff out of the way. All right, Witch King comes into play. Obviously, that makes total sense. And then I move. And with four dice, my opponent very reasonably... Hits the fellowship, but I use wizard staff because of course. So, you know, that saves, you know, it, it did delay the death of Gandalf, but it saved a whole tile, possibly two tiles going over Moria, a reveal. So I think it was worth it. All right. My opponent is using a ring to do a muster. And what that means to me is there's going to be this big attack into Helm's Deep. And I'm sad, but there's really not much I can do about that. So I'm at least going to try and defend Gondor. It would have been great if I had a little more time. I could have played the Red Arrow, could have gotten them to Westamnet, and then been prepared to move in. But I just don't have the dice for it. 
and this is turn four and I don't have Gandalf yet. So I'm still rolling four dice to my opponents now nine dice. So that is, that is one of the consequences of the hunt going well. Um, I don't think any tiles have been drawn yet. There was one, there was one hit, but no tiles have been drawn yet. And so, yes, that's good from a corruption standpoint, but it's bad from a, um, dice action standpoint. All right, so I do play the scouts. I think it makes sense to at least have some, you know, some chance. Um, I also have three Rohan muster cards. No, one, no, nah, there's just, just, just one. Yeah. Yep, Helm's Deep is going to fall, and maybe at least I can muster up Edoras and, and fight back in some way. All right, so I get some cards. I do get Guahir, which is nice because now I can, if I get a um, Palantir, I can separate out Strider at some point. But obviously my first priority is to get Gandalf. All right. So my opponent allocates one eye. I decide not to declare because... I think because if I move a single time... And I don't get, and I don't kill off Gandalf, but I have a Will of the West. Then I would have five movement, and I could play Gua here and get all the way to Dol Amroth in a single move. So I think that's why I don't, I don't declare here, and it it prevents my opponent from playing nasty shadow cards on me. All right, but they roll three more eyes, and I do get my Will of the West. So. My plan here is move. If I kill off Gandalf, if I if I don't get hit, um, then I can use a Palantir to separate Strider and crown him in Dol Amroth. If I do get hit, then Gandalf can die, and um, and that's that. So I move first with four dice. My opponent does hit me, which is fair. And they managed to reveal me. So obviously it would be nice if I wasn't revealed and it would have been a three. Great. But um, that's how it goes. So five movement. I go over Moria. And at this point, you know, I have the Will of the West sitting right here. If I don't get one of these five tiles, the two, two, three, 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 any of those, and instead I get any of the eyes or the zero when going through Moria, because I'm certainly going through Moria, given how well the hunt has gone so far, um, then, you know, then I don't get Gandalf. And given that I have Athelas in hand, I would rather, I would rather get Gandalf now and Strider later, as opposed to Strider now and Gandalf later, given that I've been hit at this point. So I decide to just kill off Gandalf to this one, to this one reveal. And then we get to draw the extra tile and it's a, and it's a three. So, you know, I would have preferred to save Gandalf if I knew a three was going to be drawn, but I didn't know. So I, I still think that choice was probably right. And this was just a little bit of bad luck, but that's how it goes sometimes. So I take all three corruption instead of using Axe and Bow because I want to save Axe and Bow against Foul Thing from the Deep if my opponent has that because I don't want a one tile if it gets drawn to get two or three points of corruption. Um, if a two gets drawn, then obviously I'll just take the two but or I'll have to lose a random companion to a two, but that doesn't feel quite as bad as losing like Strider or even a level two companion to a one from Foul Thing from the Deep. So that's really the, the main... I mean, obviously, Axe and Bow is good, one corruption, but that's it's sort of sometimes extra corruption protection. Also, I have Athelos, so maybe I'm going to heal three when I when I roll it. Well, now that Strider's Guide. Okay, my opponent musters because they know that Gandalf is coming and I might have Ents. That was the other reason that's nice to get Gandalf here. So I get Gandalf right away to threaten Ents. And because of the current situation, my opponent doesn't have any more elites. So they cannot guarantee safety from Ents, but they decide to recruit one one regular anyway. And and I think that's right. 
you know, there are good, I don't actually have an int in hand right now, but there are good chances that I, that I would have an int. And by mustering that single extra regular, you're vastly decreasing free people's chances of, of getting Saruman with a single end. I mean, if I have two end cards, then sure, Saruman's going to go down either way, most likely. But I, I really, I like this. And, and I think I also like getting an extra Nazgul, you know, now, now that my, now that the fellowship is out and about having some more Nazgul are good. Do you really need two more regulars here? I mean, maybe, I guess that does give you, that does give you 10, but you have to be a little careful about not having enough regulars to reduce elites. That can that can happen. So yeah, I, I, I like that play just fine. Um, all right, so I go ahead and hide and I use the muster, even though I do want to muster up, I really do want to muster up Gondor soon before Corsairs. But it's, I think it's more important to hide, be able to keep making progress at the start of next turn. The Fellowship, you know, is not, yeah, it's, it's doing, doing perfectly fine. I'm doing a reasonable job defending militarily. Obviously, I'm not happy to lose Helm's Deep so quickly against this army. But, you know, I did a nice job defending Woodland Realm. And it's not, if I manage to muster up Gondor, I think I do have some time. So I want to just keep making regular progress with the Fellowship. Okay, so... Rohan gets towards war and then I pass and they play fighting Urukai and they completely demolish Helm's Deep without taking any casualties. So that was just, I mean, single round of combat just annihilated, absolutely annihilated Helm's Deep. And, you know, now this is a really sizable army. I had hoped to at least deplete them a little bit. This is a really sizable army that can now go anywhere do do exciting things. I'm going to obviously try and muster up Rohan to make some defense against it, but I don't know I'm going to have much success there. So, I play Athalas here. And, you know, seeing this result, maybe this was a mistake. Maybe I could have hid with this Palantir and then mustered into Rohan with my last action. Um I think I felt bad losing cards. You know, I would have had I would have had a lot of leftover cards. So I wanted to play some, but maybe maybe that was a mistake. I don't know. Maybe I didn't need to hide. I don't know. My my opponent I think didn't have character dice. Um did they have did they have palantirs? Yes, they had a palantir. Yeah, so maybe once they chose not to play something nasty. I could have assumed they didn't have anything nasty to play on the Fellowship. All right. And then they move their army in. And I think that makes total sense. And they haven't drawn Corsairs. So I feel like I have a little more breathing room with Dol Amroth. I'm still wondering about this army getting in here. Why isn't this army preparing to get in there? I, I would wait a little bit longer, but I don't know. Maybe you're not going to draw Corsairs. And honestly, now that Gondor is at war, maybe it's, maybe it's just you're not going to be in time anyway if you don't have it in hand right now. So... All right, so I'm up to five dice on turn six. Obviously, that is a little late, um, but better late than never. All right, and I'm happy to see Thranduil's archers. So just when my opponent is getting ready, probably to make some attacks up there, I'm going to get another elite in there. And that's nice. I am worried about this army coming up to Lorien, but they're going to have to deal with this army down in um, Rohan. I get rid of there and back again because... I didn't need two uh, companion separations. Maybe it's better to keep them back again because it gives one extra movement. Um, I don't know. Guahir gives some benefit against going into siege. Not that I really intend to do that, but I felt like four movement would probably be enough because Gandalf can get, I mean, uh, Strider can get to Minas Tirith pretty easily. All right. So my opponent allocates one eye adds two more and I get a single movement. So I did get two musters and I want to, while, while I have the chance to muster in Rohan, I want to go ahead and do that. So I muster once and I was thinking what might happen is that my opponent might try to take fold and then I would play Path of the Woses to save 
all of these elites and, and bring them to Minas Tirith and just buff up Minas Tirith. So I don't know exactly how they're going to go about this attack, but either way, while I have musters to spend, I'm going to at least try and deplete this army a little bit. Okay, they attack into Edoras, and obviously at any point, if I draw two Ents, I'm going to play them, but I don't have them right now. All right, we come to kill, I think is a just a great play here. Um, you know, that, that mustering is nice in the field, but you want to you just take care of Rohan now that you've started it. So um, I think that's great. They get quite a few hits. I get a single hit and they make some progress. Now, I'm not exactly sure why all of these units were moved in and why it was split this way. I wonder if you kept if you kept maybe five in Westamnet and just moved a single one into Edoras. Um, it's a little risky because the army from Fold could move back out. I think I would only move in maybe a single unit. And then if I'm going to spend, if free people is going to spend time attacking back into Edoras, then you can just attack it again. That's okay. So instead I muster again and I'm thinking, okay, maybe, maybe Shadow is going to let me alone in fold. Um, I want to keep whittling them down. I want to spend the musters while I have them. But I think Shadow very wisely does not allow that to happen. Attacks into fold, gets three hits, and I do one. And they leave one behind in Edoras. I think that makes reasonable sense. I mean, Gondor is at war, so it's not impossible to come back and deal with this. And there we go. So... I obviously move the fellowship. I do. I am worried about getting Thranduils in before before the attack in Woodland Realm happens. But it seems like my opponent is focusing on taking care of Rohan first. It it probably would have been better. I like using the musters when I did, but it probably would have been better here to to just play Thranduils because I think my opponent could reasonably leave this army in Eastern Net alone. I do have Path of the Woeses, so I think. I think it does make sense for the the shadow to take care of it, the, the army in Eastamnet, but it's still only one regular, so. Okay. Um, but I move, and I get hit again. Um, you know, that's not great, and I get revealed, but at least it's no damage. And I can use, I do still have Strider, so Strider can do what he needs to do. I didn't, I didn't declare into Eastamnet because I felt like my opponent was attacking into Eastamnet and I didn't want to give them just, you know, a free reroll on me. And I didn't, I also, by the way, when I, when I was defeated in Fold, I didn't retreat to Druden Forest because I wanted to keep the surprise of Path of the Woeses and or um, just didn't want, I felt like this army was likely moving toward Minas Tirith anyway at this point, and so I didn't want to give them free movement in the direction they want to go. All right, so um, my opponent tries to attack Eastamnet, but manages to miss, which is pretty unlikely. I don't do any damage back, and they don't press, which I think is right because they don't want to let me get into Lorien. Um, so that makes sense. And at this point, I go ahead and play Thranduils, and, you know, that's good. And then my opponent musters one toward getting the South Rounds and Easterlings towards war, and attack Eastamnet again. I go ahead and play Advantageous Position, not that I think, you know, that unit really matters that much, but I have six cards in hand, so um, I might as well play it, and maybe it's going to waste yet another attack if they don't roll a six. But they roll a six, they don't move anyone in, and I can tell that this army is going to head south towards Minas Tirith. All right, I use Strider's ability to hide. And then my opponent, again, I think is playing really well here, waiting to play the tile drawing card until I've hidden so that they might reveal me. You know, it's not great chances to reveal me, but there were four out of, what is that, 13 chances to reveal me. So might as well, you know, might as well take your shot when you can. Um, but they get a two and that's good, you know, inflicting two, two corruption right there. 
um, is, you know, not a bad result from Isolters. Okay, more card draw. I do finally draw an Ent, and I'm very happy to see Faramir's here. It's a good reinforcement card for Gondor, and maybe maybe the army in Minus Morgul is going to move out, and I'll get some extra hits against it, so that could be fun. It looks like Gondor is the next target. All right, my opponent allocates two eyes, and that's interesting. I guess they're worried about the Fellowship's progress. They want to make sure I don't make it to Mordor this turn, or at least make it much less likely. And I only roll one character die. So, um, you know... Uh, sorry, that was last roll. So I, I, I rolled three. My, my mistake. I rolled three uh, against two eyes, which is which is good. This is, you know, that's slightly above average. You'd expect two and a half. I still am I'm thinking about getting, you know, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about separating Strider and, and maybe getting a um, crowning him, but I'm not rolling Will of the West. So I am worried about Day Without Dawn. I think Day Without Dawn is definitely a concern. My opponent has drawn almost half their cards, but I don't have a Will of the West, so it's moot. I'm not, probably not going to separate Strider without having a Will of the West, but but we'll see. Either way, start off with a move and get hit again. Um, and revealed again. So not great, but I do have Strider, so, you know, I can hide again. That's okay. Um, I, take, I take the one Corruption because, again, Foul Thing from the Deep is still out there. I do have Strider in, so... You know, I don't want to lose Strider to a one. And I have both Gimli and Aragorn. Um, I mean, both Gimli and Legolas. So, I, you know, I think Axe and Bow is pretty safe to, to stick around. Um, I don't want to risk a random companion at this point. So it's getting, you know, corruption is definitely getting a little high. I need to be careful. But Isildur's has already been played. So I am a little less worried about that directly. Morgul Wound is still out. Candles of Corpses is still out. So I need to be careful, but I'm probably still okay. All right. One thing about this route, um, I can't stop in Minas Tirith. So had I gone East of Net, Druiden Forest, Minas Tirith, I could have potentially stopped in Minas Tirith to heal a bunch. And I think I was just prioritizing not leading them to where the fellowship was, but maybe I should have. Maybe I should have gone to East of Net, then I could be in Druiden Forest, but I'm probably not going to stop in Minas Tirith. You know, corruption is high, but I have a lot of companions still. So I think I'm probably still okay and they're only there's only one red tile at this point and i have elven cloaks still so i think i'm just not planning on stopping in minas tirith and it looks like minas tirith is going to get besieged any moment anyway so all right my opponent forms up their armies getting ready to besiege minas tirith and i'm glad i have at least one muster you know it's not it's not great this army can this army get all the way to Dol Amroth? If they muster, it looks like it would be a little tricky to get all the way to Dol Amroth this round. Maybe they have... Um, yeah, so so they might be able to do it. I need to be careful about that. Um, and I'm certainly thinking about that. But All right, I go ahead and hide. And the reason why I hide with a character die, even though I had Strider was I want to use this Palantir for Faramir's Rangers, and I want to use this Muster for Dol Amroth, because I want to make sure I'm bothered to get Gondor to war. I better get that mustered up before it gets besieged. All right, so my opponent moves into Druidan Forest, and at this point I play <clears throat> um, Faramir's Rangers, even though it would have been nice to hit somebody in North or South Athelion, I play Faramir's Rangers now because I don't want to lose the free muster that I get. And then my opponent will have some debates. Do they, do they besiege Minas Tirith right away, or do they let me get a bunch of extra units into Minas Tirith? I would be willing to use this um, character to move into Minas Tirith with this extra elite and leader, which would, which would make it re you know, quite formidable. Um, or possibly, if possibly go to Pilargear. So, um, my opponent besieges Minas Tirith right away. And 
<clears throat> that's good. Um, but do you see the potential problem here? So think about as shadow what the potential risks are for you and what you need to be careful about. And would you, would you spot this? So we'll continue with the turn. And my opponent tries to attack Pilar Gear, but um, I remind them the South Rounds and Eastern Links are not at war, so they muster them to war. I pass, and then they attack Pilar Gear, and they play Great Host for an automatic hit and get in. That's good for them. And then I muster into Dol Amroth. So I pass again. They play Shelob's Lair. I'm not happy to see that, but what can you do? And then instead of moving the fellowship, I go to Druiden Forest. So this is this is the real problem with the way that Minas Tirith was besieged. And I don't think it's so obvious. I mean, maybe it's obvious in retrospect, but <clears throat> this is now gonna create a real headache for for shadow. It's going to take actions, right? I'm going to have to get this army to fold. I'm going to have to muster up into Rohan more, eventually retake Helm's Deep, but this does this does certainly cause problems. All right. They and Shadow doesn't have an attack, so you know, they go ahead and play this extra card. That's good. You know, three three red tiles fellowship is, you know, looking a little more nervous. All right, so they get the fourth red tile, and I get Mirror of Galadriel. I'm happy to see Mirror of Galadriel because I like the heroic death, and I like if I want to get Aragorn, I now have you know a greater chance of, of getting it if I need the Will of the West. I go ahead and discard Power Too Great. I like Power Too Great. It's a great card, but it seems like my opponent is not particularly going for the Elves right now, and... What else do I get rid of? I want to save Challenge of the King because my plan is potentially at some point, and maybe I should have gotten rid of Challenge of the King instead, but my, my plan was to eventually, because my opponent has the red eye, once the Fellowship makes it to Mordor, if I, if, if I make it to Mordor with relatively low casualties, then I could separate Strider, crown him as Aragorn or not, and then play Challenge of the King. I also have Dead Men of Dunharrow. So I th I'm thinking at some point, assuming the Fellowship is doing okay, I'm going to separate Strider. And um, that could be good. So my opponent allocates two eyes here. And, you know, I think that makes some sense. You do have nine dice. But given this military stuff that's happening around Rohan, I might have done just one. But they roll three more. So that's really just unfortunate timing. Um, and, and then I get, I get a great roll here. So, so this is really good. I get to get out of range of this army in Minas Tirith and just start walking toward Helm's Deep. And if my opponent doesn't do anything about it, then I'm going to be able to um, recapture it. And probably eventually I'll be able to recapture it if I get enough um if i muster up rohan enough all right i like this army movement into etmores it lets me reinforce rivendell with a north unit and that way if i ever draw kirden ships i can play it and i still have an extra unit or two that i could put into lorian or rivendell wherever happens to get attacked so being able to reinforce the elven pool is is important Okay, and I'm happy to see these musters, and maybe I can separate Strider and get um, get him this turn, and maybe not move at all against against five eyes. Okay, so my opponent goes ahead and uses a character action to move that army, and I think that makes sense because if they're if they want to defend Helm's Deep, and they're worried about Ents once they move out, then it's better to use the character action now before the before um, they lose their leadership ability. So they do that, and then obviously I play Ents. So um, Faramir induced this this action, and that's just great. 
that was just really great. Faramir, way to go. Um, so Ents come now. And and then what would you play? So you could play Guahir. You could play Elven Cloaks. Those are the most likely ones. Um, it doesn't really make sense to... yeah. So just Guahir or Elven Cloaks. Which do you play? And if you play Guahir, where do you send Strider? If I had saved there and back again, I could have moved five to get to Dol Amroth. One, one to Druid and Forest, Osgiliath, Pelargir, Lamadon. Dol Amroth, but I can't make it to Dol Amroth. So I decide to, and I and I could, if I send him right now, I could send him with Gwahir to Minas Tirith and then uh, crown him this turn and get my extra die, which I love. Um, but I think the problem with going to Minas Tirith is that this army in Pelargir will just U-turn and go back to Minas Tirith, and this army out of Mor- Minas Morgul would just come and pile on Minas Tirith. So that's why I didn't go to Minas Tirith. If I had saved there and back again instead, I'm certain, I, I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure I would have gone to Dol Amroth um, because I would have been able to muster, right? I have to have a, a pretty full contingent in Dol Amroth. I'd be willing to let Aragorn fight that out. But I can't do that, so instead I send him to I send him to fold, and you know it's nice to have a little extra leadership. It's nice that he is a captain of the West, so he'll get I'll get extra, extra dice when attacking with that army, and at some point I can play Dead Men of John Harrow and maybe crown him then. So, okay, maybe maybe my opponent's going to whittle themselves down a bit in Minas Tirith. Maybe they'll whittle themselves down a bit against Ol Amroth, and then I'll be able to strike at an opportune time in Pelargir. That's sort of my thinking, and hopefully I'll time that with the moment my the Fellowship gets into Mordor, and then I can also play Challenge of the King. Though to be fair, I can play Challenge of the King in Rohan too, so um, that's fine. All right, so Saruman's gone. And my opponent continues marching on Lamadon and brings these units into Gap of Rohan. I'm not sure why that wasn't going into Helm's Deep right there, because now they're going to have some trouble getting into Helm's Deep. Um, okay, so they took that back. Instead, they brought this army into in. Uh, the army from Minas Morgul into South Athelion. I think I like the Gap of Rohan better, and I like going into Helm's Deep even more, but my opponent did mention after the game that this was this was definitely, they felt like, was a mistake for them. Um, because I muster into Dol Amroth, then they attack into Dol Amroth to prevent me from mustering any more in there, which does make sense. Um, and then I muster an Elite into Fold, and then my opponent plays on on they went here because what else are they going to do with the character action? But then that allows me this will of the West action to get to reclaim Westham net at the end of the round. And because my opponent happened to roll so many eyes, I was able to take the last action. So I'm actually getting two actions in a row here. I go into Westham net. Um, this elite from um, from North Downs is going to be able to make it into Rivendell to defend Rivendell from any attack. And I'm going to, at the start of next round, be able to get Reclaim Helm's Deep. So obviously that is not good for Shadow and way to go, way to go um, Faramir. Marching all the way up to Helm's Deep. Okay, my opponent allocates one eye this time, which I think makes sense. And still rolls two more. And I get this incredible, just an incredible roll, right? This is what, what more can I ask for? The, the Southrons and Easterlings are at war, so I have to use a Will of the West, but I'm happy to use a Will of the West as an army because I get into Helm's Deep and, um, and I get my, my elite into Rivendell. So Rivendell's feeling much better. Um, so overall... I managed to retake a, a, a stronghold and still defend all of these. Now it is turn nine and the fellowship is still three moves away from Mordor. So this is, you know, not very slow movement for the fellowship, but, 
And at some point, depending on how these battles go, maybe even this turn, I can Dead Men of Dunharrow and and then um, crown Aragorn. That, that would be really nice for me. All right, so Rage of the Dunlendings to come south. And... I think that makes sense. I think my opponent is a little worried about military victory stuff. If they completely ignore Orthanc, then, you know, Aragorn and Faramir can muster up. There are plenty of, there are still, you know, plenty more Rohan units to muster. And so I think, I think that does make sense to get those uh, units in position. And then I go ahead and move the fellowship because why not? I've bought, I've bought them a lot of time and yay, they get a safe movement. So, um, that was good. And then of course, Nazgul strike right away. So I think my opponent has been doing a great job hunt, hunting the fellowship. The Nazgul strike could have gotten rid of ax and bow, but I think it's, it is better to roll. Um, there are very good chances of getting to draw a tile and then the tile draw lets me just, you know, it, it's even worse than one corruption guaranteed. So I, th I think that makes a lot of sense. And I took Gimli guaranteed because I'm using corruption efficiently, right? It doesn't make sense to, to I, you know, I could have lost a random one, but maybe at some point I'm going to draw Horn of Gondor and I'm going to want to play it. So might as well get rid of Gimli while I can. Um, and there we go. So I hide and then my opponent plays foul thing. So, so that was the moment I was right. This was the moment that I was, I've been saving ax and bow for, there were four ones in the pool. And had I not been saving ax and bow, um, it's possible that, that a one from foul thing would have gotten two points of corruption. So, but now that, you know, now that foul thing is played, it makes sense to use ax and bow because there's a chance that Legolas would be picked. And then, um, and then I would lose Axe and Bow. Axe and Bow would go away um, without effect because its condition of play, Gimli or Legolas in the Fellowship, would no longer be true. So obviously I'm going to use Axe and Bow and then Random Companion, and it turns out it's Legolas anyway. So um, I don't take any corruption directly, but again, the Fellowship is really being whittled down. So there are four red tiles in the... In the um, in the hunt pool now and more and more tiles are being drawn. I'm trying to move as carefully as possible. All right. So I go ahead and play file here because, um, I don't want to move again this round. I have plenty of time militarily, so I might as well play, play useful cards. Um, and then my opponent attacks into Dol Amroth and they play great host here. It's a little surprising because, you know, They'd have to do a bunch of damage to make that successful. I probably would have held that. Um, maybe cycled Lidless Eye, but they roll um, two damage and I miss entirely. So that's obviously good. And then they press and play Desperate Battle here. They did redraw into Desperate Battle. So I think that is one benefit of playing the... Um, playing the great host when they did, you know, it's possible the great host could trigger if you get three hits and, um, you did cycle into desperate battle. So, you know, that's good. And they get, uh, four hits against my zero and, um, then manage to not kill the last unit. So they had a great battle, right? They took me from seven hit points down to one and took, I think one back from me total over all those rounds. Um, but then still didn't manage to quite close the deal. So um, I think, so just looking back on why I didn't try and get Aragorn at that point, maybe was a mistake. M maybe it would have been better. I think my plan was I wanted to let these armies be whittled down a little bit before sending Aragorn down there. Um, and I wanted to keep it a little bit of a surprise because I felt like with the two army actions that they had, if I sent Aragorn down to Pelargir, their their next action could be move next to move next to Aragorn with whatever army, even this this giant army in Dol Amroth, or maybe these seven regulars or something, um, maybe a couple of these elites and these regulars, and then with their last action they could attack into Pelargir. 
And while it does get me Aragorn, um, I have to sort of then start to run away. And, you know, I don't, I don't have, it just seemed like it was poorly timed and I had other useful things to do with those dice. I'm happy to use this will of the West to muster, but I do wonder about that. Should I have, should I have gone for, for Aragorn right there? Um, but I just muster up Rohan because I have a bunch of musters and I use, I could have played Aomer there. Um, and, but I feel like next round in case I roll a bunch of Palantirs, I want to have something useful to do with the Palantirs. Um, you know, I do like not discarding cards, but I also like using my dice efficiently next round. So I decide to, I decide to muster that way. Maybe that's wrong. I don't know. Uh, my opponent takes out uh, Dol Amroth. So that was, I would say, a very poor showing from the defense of Dol Amroth. I think it does, you know, you'd expect it to get defeated, um, probably. But I think you'd expect, you'd expect Shadow to take a lot more damage than, than what they did. Um, okay, so we're up to turn 10. And... I get the Grey Company and through Dana Knight. Obviously, um, Grey Company is nice, but I already have Aomer, and I don't really need to draw a bunch more strategy cards right here, though, you know, it's always good, but um, I decide to get rid of Grey Company. Through Dana Knight just is so flexible, gives you a lot of options. I want to keep that for a while. And I am thinking about military victory stuff. You know, I would much prefer to get um, six dice before trying that, but... You know, depending on how some of these battles go, I, I can have some chances. I'm not loving Mordor, but maybe I can make it in safely. All right, my opponent allocates two eyes, doesn't roll anymore, and I get a couple of movements. So again, I'm going to have a chance to, if I want to, Dead Men of Dunharrow um, and then crown him. But if I do that, then I won't be able to get into Mordor without using a ring. So... Um, I start off by moving and I'm safe this time. And then my opponent, did my opponent just, no, they didn't, they don't have cruel, cruel weather right here. Um, so they, um, get Fords of Eisen powered up. I guess they're going to try and take, take Helm's Deep and I go ahead and play Aomer and they attack into Helm's Deep. I decide that I'm going to stay because I don't want to waste the unit. And this is not that strong of a um, army. They have nine hit points and I have nine hit points, but I have three leadership and I can muster more right here. And if I do well in this battle, I could counterattack and, and go for Orthanc. So that's why I don't go into a siege. And um, my opponent plays a strategy card. And I decide not to play anything because I'm still thinking that I'm going to play... Um, at this point in the turn, I'm going to play Dead Men of Dunharrow, um, Crown Aragorn, and then maybe a ring to move in for the last movement. So that's, that's my thinking. But we'll see what happens. So Deadly Strife is definitely scary, right? This could be this could be quite bad. Um, expect to take two and a half points of damage right now, but um, but take two. So yeah, that's actually that's actually pretty average, right? You'd, you'd expect to do two and a half, and I and I take two. Not not the end of the world. Um, but fighting back. Um, I do four and you would expect with that, with that much leadership, I think you'd expect pretty close to four, maybe three and a half or four. So this is, you know, close to what would be expected. Um, my opponent does not press at this point and I keep the elite because I have strider. So I can still do, um, I can still roll five dice if the battle had continued and I have plenty of more regulars. And when you're going for a military victory, you want to be able to have the elites to take out the stronghold. So like quickly. So that's why I decided to save the elites. And, and I'm, I'm pleased with that choice. Um, my opponent draws a card 
and draws cruel weather at exactly the moment they need it. Um, so that was just that was just an incredible top deck, right? They didn't have it in their hand right here, and then one out of fourteen chance they draw it. And I think it makes sense to to draw a card anyway, right? There there could be other ways to stall me with Nazgul Search or um, the tile drawing cards. I think Orc Patrol is still out. Um, so I think it makes sense to draw. There, there are several cards they could have drawn. All right. So if you remember, last game I played against D-Mang 17, I did not move into Mordor when I had the chance. I, I sort of just waited around outside and did other things, waiting for a better moment to get in. Um, but uh, we'll see if I'm going to do that again. So my opponent now musters some Nazgul. I'm not exactly sure why, but I guess what else are you going to muster? Um, yeah, I mean, maybe muster an elite in Orthanc, I guess, but yeah, I don't really need to worry about that. Um, having more Nazgul around seems good to be able to have two, two fronts. All right, and I go ahead and move now. I'm not sure why I... Um, why I decided at that moment to do it. Um, it's a little strange. I think if I was going to do it, better to do it sooner. When my opponent drew a character card, if I'm like, well, what if they drew Nazgul Search? Like, then I should have moved, and then they wouldn't be able to stall me. So um, that extra muster, that ordering was wrong. I should should have decided it first. All right, so um, they missed me, though. And, you know, that's a 30% chance that they miss. Not, not totally crazy. And then... Um, they say, ugh. And, you know, I sort of felt like they didn't have cruel weather. And so by typing out ugh, when you miss like that is, is really interesting. And, you know, I don't want to get into too much of bluffing, um, you know, like that, but, but they do have cruel weather. And in fact, that's actually perfectly nice for them that they missed because had they not missed there would have been a better than 50% chance that I get revealed and then crew weather is useless so I don't know maybe they were maybe they would have been happy either way they're, they're probably happy either way um all right so Nazgul get moved around they come to the right places and then I decide to play Elven Cloaks because at this point I'm thinking my opponent no way no way do they have cruel weather um, and I don't know that I want to give them a ring anyway. If, if my backup plan is trying for a military victory, um, I want to make sure that I can capitalize on any particularly bad rolls, um, without them having a ring. So, um, there we go. And I don't think it's quite time for, um, for, uh, dead men because there's still too many armies nearby Pilar gear. So one, um, one thought here is maybe I could have used this card drawing effect and then seen if they were going to play Cruel Weather just in case and then had the option to um, use a ring to get in this round. But again, I didn't think they had it and I didn't want to waste another card. So... Because I would have, I would have then had too many cards in hand, so I just sort of let it ride. But maybe once they moved, once they move Nazgul off of the Fellowship, yeah, that's a, that's another thing. Like, yeah, I don't know. I wonder, would you have, would you have used the character token, the, the sorry, the draw card? token to be able to go last this round to be able to see if they use cruel weather with the assumption that if they do use it you would use a ring to make the final movement and get into mortar this round i don't know i feel like military is still going okay like they're gonna take minas tirith that gets them up to seven but how do they get where do they get to 10? I think I still have time and I'm still thinking they don't have it. So, all right, but they do have it. They top decked it and that's awesome for them. 
So not, not great for me. Um, but that's how it goes. So I do get, we prove the Swifter and that is a good card to see at this point because the Witch King is coming into, coming into Minas Tirith. So, um, my opponent gets some good cards. Deadly Strife is always good. Ring Wraiths are broad. These are, these are all good cards. And, um, I declare the fellowship because now I can use the um, card drawing token and then as my last action move in. And then the only thing that can stall me at that point is Orc Patrol, Orc Patrol with these three with these three tiles. Now, obviously, it's not great to have a 30% chance of getting stalled again. Um but that's sort of my plan. Okay, so my opponent allocates three eyes here. That is a lot of eyes. Rolls one more, and then I get a single character. A single character. And that's just um, really sad because I want to play We Prove the Swifter to be able to defend Minas Tirith from the Witch King and help this... Um, army survive and I do have heroic death so I can really make Minas Tirith last for quite some time um, and I also have dead men of Dunharrow to come in and sort of mess with mess with Gondor also um, so I have some tricks up my sleeve but I need more character results so character Palantir Will of the West any of those but I only get one so I do have a lot of musters though, so maybe I can do something with that. So I start off by mustering more Rohan units and uh, my opponent moves on to into Minas Tirith. And now at this point, I think, okay, I'm going to get Gandalf in there. Um, oh, my opponent um, uses, my opponent uses ring rates are abroad here to get the Nazgul on there. Okay. And then they want, and then they retreat back to Orthanc because they don't want to give me a free attack into Fords of Eisen. And um, and I think that makes a lot of sense because I could just attack into Fords of Eisen repeatedly um, and make some progress, especially with Ents, right? There are two different Ent cards that are still out. They could just annihilate that army. So so I think I think that's a good that's a good play on his part there. A wizard um, is never late. And then I use my Nor character he um, he arrives to play we prove he the Swifter, get Gandalf in there. And I decide to do that you know, I don't want to. I don't want Gandalf to die, um, but I want Minas Tirith to live, and I think there are some chances, particularly in combination with heroic death, that I can keep Minas Tirith alive. So, so that's my thinking. And if I need to, I can use a ring to move in, and and that's fine. All right. So they um, attack Minas Tirith, try and take out Gandalf. They play Delvery of Orthanc and I shield wall, and they roll. Um, Three fives. Obviously, that is not good for me, and um, and I get two back, which is about what we would expect. A little worse with with two leadership, but um, pretty pretty close to two is what you'd expect. And then the Witch King plays um, Deadly Strife, and I play Heroic Death, and I obviously don't want to lose Gandalf on the second round of combat. Um, but I need to keep Helm's Deep alive. So, you know, I'm not excited to go forward with the game with only four dice. Um, but if I can manage to keep Helm's Deep alive for a while, then it's worth it. All right. But on the Deadly Strife, my opponent only rolls one damage. Now, you know, expected is two and a half with no leadership. So, you know, that's bad, but not so crazy bad. Um, and I get um, five hits which is definitely above average. Um, but you would expect something like three and a half or four. Um, yeah, actually, may maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is that high. It's probably relatively close because I have two leadership and I'm hitting on um, anything other than a two or a three. So it's, it's going to be pretty high. So, But this really swings the tide of the battle. So my heroic death still does something. I lose a leader for it. And my opponent just you know, has to take five casualties. So that really stalls the attack on Minas Tirith. 
And now I'm thinking, okay, this is the moment. This is the moment that I waited for, for um, Dead Men of Dunharrow. Where is my Palantir? Where is my Will of the West now? Um, but, um, you know, maybe maybe I'm thinking, okay, the army from um, Dol Amroth is going to come over to Lamadon, eventually come to Pilargir. And then at that moment, I can run it. I can do it and then try and dish out a whole bunch of damage to that army. So, um, you know, I'm not too disappointed. All right. I want to take care of this unit in um, Edoras just so that I can vacate Helm's Deep fully and, and go on the offensive and attack or think if I need to. Um, and that, that unit can't retreat anywhere. So I just attack it. It takes a couple rounds and I take back Edoras. Um, that also means my opponent... Um, it's going to have to be a little careful with um, claiming two two cities because yes, they have Dale, but I'm going to retake Pelargir with um, Dead Men at some point. So there are some potential stalling things that I can do there too. All right, um, my opponent ends up mustering an elite in Orthanc. I think that makes total sense. Clearly. I have some possibilities of, of taking Orthanc. Um, so that seems like a very reasonable muster. Um, and then I go ahead and start mustering up in, um, in Bree because I'm thinking, okay, this, this army can eventually take Orthanc and um, maybe this army can come take Moria, can go up to Mount Gundabad. Um, who knows? But have musters, let's use them, the north can do it. And because that army, because that attack in Minas Tirith stalled out, I feel like I have even more time. So I don't need to rush too much with the fellowship. Um, my opponent draws a character card, and I decide to muster again. And I don't want to give the ring. And it's tricky. Uh, maybe, maybe I should have done it. But I'm thinking, if my opponent is putting three eyes in the pool to try and stop the fellowship, then like I, I should be able to win militarily, even with only five dice, if they're going to keep doing that. Um, so I'm going to see if they change their strategy and I'm not in so much of a rush. All right. Um, I draw house of stewards. Okay. Um, Gandalf can use that brave stand and, um, daylight, which is great. Um, it's one of the best defensive cards. My opponent only allocates one eye this time. So, um, you know, clearly they're shifting strategies a little bit. I think that makes a lot of sense. But now maybe the fellowship can make it in. All right, they get one more eye and I roll a whole bunch of characters. Again, I would have been happy at this point to see a Will of the West to crown Aragorn um, or more musters, but the the attacks aren't bad. I can I can certainly, you know, threaten some things with that. So I pass, and um, my opponent plays Monsters Roused. And, you know, too bad I didn't still have that elite in Trollshaws. Maybe I should have kept it in Trollshaws just, um, just to mess with Monsters Roused. But, okay. But I think that's a great play. Um, they need the additional mustering. I was mustering up in, in Bree. I don't usually play Monsters Rouse, but this just feels like a perfect time for it. It separates um, those two armies in case I was going to go somewhere. So, All right, I go ahead and draw a character card here because um, I have a whole bunch of character dice and I know that I'm going to be making my last move into Mordor um, this round to avoid things like Nazgul Search. Um, really just Nazgul Search. So... Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe if you're comparing Nazgul Search versus Orc Patrol, it makes more sense to go ahead and move. Maybe there are other cards I'm not thinking about right now, but that's interesting. Okay. Um, so Bilbo's Song, you know, I'm happy to see it. It's, it's perfectly fine. Um, I don't know if I'm going military. I don't know if I'm going to try and destroy the ring. I mean, the Hunt Pool is okay um but i'm already at five corruption so i'm sort of if you if i use these guys entirely eff efficiently i'm at one corruption going into mordor against all four red tiles um and two and three of the blue tiles it's okay but definitely 
definitely feel risky and feel like I'm certainly going to hit some red tiles along the way. I'd love to draw Nithrocote and Sting. Um, there's another way is obviously a good good card to draw. So, all right. Um, my opponent moves Nazgul around. I'm not entirely sure where they're going with it. Um, so they end up doing this and I guess what happened was they just didn't get army movements. So, so this is one benefit of not, um, of not giving them a ring that when they get like a slightly awkward role like this, um, they just have to do sort of awkward things. So their plan now, I guess is to move this regular from Pilargir to Osgiliath, from Osgiliath to Minas Tirith. And I think they might have been really clever to put this Nazgul and Osgiliath in case I have Dead Men of Dunharrow. Because if you um, don't do that and I eliminate this regular in Pilargir with the Nazgul, then you can't get the, the regulars from Osgiliath into Minas Tirith. And you just stall out in Minas Tirith again. Um, you know, one thing I wonder is, do you want to bring all these units from Dol Amroth all the way? Like, that's a really long time. Um, okay. But at that moment, I choose now. Now is the moment that I choose to strike with um, Aragorn because it's going to take more time for um, for him to relocate the I'll, I'll play the dead men. So I play dead men here and um, it eliminates the Nazgul guaranteed because I'm going to roll at least a one and I get the Gondor units and, you know, getting rid of one Nazgul plus um, one unit and now making it that much harder to take Minas Tirith um, is good. And these units in Dol Amroth can't really come and do useful things because there's no Nazgul with him and he'll, he'll have to spend another another um, character die to move them. So, you know, I have some options here. Um, this is not a particularly strong um, army here. <laughs> uh, and I wish I had a Will of the West here, but I don't. So Strider may just have to do what he can do until I roll a Will of the West. So... My opponent moves into debates quite a bit and then decides, yep, I'm going to move into Minas Tirith. And, you know, I think that makes sense. If he can take out Gandalf, um, that's great. And he does have words of power on um, to potentially help with Gandalf. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. So I go ahead and muster in Pilar gear and muster a leader up in Bree because I want to be able to use these character dice to um, to start getting this army going, potentially. Um, all right, so attacks minus Tirith, minus Tirith, and um, I play Brave Stand. I could have used I could have used Daylight, which is obviously the more powerful defensive thing, but he's only rolling five dice on sixes. So the amount that I save um, is just not that high. So that's why I play Brave Stand. That's really probably the only combat that it makes sense to play Brave Stand in. Um, you know, maybe Strider's going to do somewhere that he's going to want to play Brave Stand, but, but probably not. So um, he gets one hit. I get zero hits, which is obviously not great. Um, well below expectation, um, but then he stops. Okay, I attack into Fords of Eisen because I want to threaten military victory. I get no hits and he gets one, so that orc, good job, orc. Um, and then he musters into Orthanc, and that might have been that might have been a mistake because. Um, Umbar is actually the bigger threat. So I move towards Umbar, and now he doesn't have a ring. He doesn't have any musters left. And while he did defend Orthanc, Orthanc was already defended pretty well, and I'm not sure that I was going to attack it without um, moving in the regulars from Westamnet first. Um, 
I mean, with Ents, with Ents, who knows, right? Like Ents can do just a ridiculous amount of damage. So um, it's not crazy, but I think I think seeing this Umbar threat is um, important. Now, had he not done that, um, I'm not exactly sure what I would have done. And um, I do have through a day and a night to get this army from Pilar gear up to North Athelion. And then like, how are you going to defend all of these Mordor strongholds? Right. That's pretty tricky. So, um, so I go after Umbar and, you know, might as well start there. Now he, he moves Nazgul again, and that's two Nazgul movements in one round. Um, I think if you're attacking Minas Tirith, then why not attack Minas Tirith? I think if you're worried about this army taking over Umbar, then why not start to get this these units in Dol Amroth ready to go with a um, with a character? You know, at least give them one Nazgul, so at least you can move them with a character die. Um, that I might have considered that, but it is tricky. All right, so I move, and he has two dice, but he hits me on a six, even though I was so patient. And this is exactly what happened in our last game. Um, I was super patient to get into Mordor in the end, and um, but he still gets me. And so this is, I think, teaching me the lesson again. If you're going to go into Mordor, maybe don't wait so long to go into Mordor when you have the chance. Um, so it hits me with a zero reveal, and then I get the the one. And I decide to lose a random companion, and I hit I hit Boromir. Um, so that losing those two tiles um, makes the hunt pool like significantly worse. Um, I think I don't know exactly how much worse, but those are very pleasant tiles <laughs> once you're down to Gollum, and those are um, obviously unpleasant now. And you know that's why I waited. So so maybe I should say to myself, okay, it was right to wait, and this was just an unlucky moment. Um, but here I'm really I'm really quite worried. I'm really quite worried for the fellowship at this point. Um, Book of Mazarbul, and there's another way. I'm happy to see there's another way. The heroic death is very useful from a um, military victory chance. It can help Aragorn stay alive in Umbar, and um, I'm I'm fine with Book of Mazarbul. Nothing special. And if I'm going to try and go with the Fellowship, then there's another way is good. Now this is the moment. Once I get to Mordor, this is the moment that I want to play Challenge of the King. But Challenge of the King only works if you're in Gondor or Rohan. So I'm I'm still happy that I moved out of Pilar gear to to take Umbar while I had the chance, but um, it is a little bit of uh, ironic timing. Okay, and I get I get a great roll here. This is obviously really good. Five attacks, a will of the west. Um, I can move with a fellowship, all of that. Um, I decide to attack Umbar first because I, I want, like, that's a pretty weak army. I, I want to um, make sure I take it out when I can. And I hope that the the Shadow doesn't have the Ulukai muster. Um, but they get another elite in Isengard. And I think that makes sense because I'm clearly going for a military victory. That's a chance. Now, one thing to be aware of... Um, you know, it's a little it's a little hard to see, but think about where where would you be mustering? You have four musters this turn and um, four attacks. So where where do you muster? The fellowship is in Mordor, so maybe maybe it makes sense to. Um, well, he still has plenty of time to get the mouth. All right, um, so I hide, and then my opponent plays Lidless Eye, and you know I. I think that does make some sense. You don't want to let me, like the hunt pool has five eyes in it. Uh, so there are a lot of eyes in there. And if you can, like a one reveal is just great, right? I'd be totally happy to get a one reveal <laughs> with this kind of pool. Um, so Lidless Eye does turn five different tiles from a one reveal to a two or a three or even a four reveal. Um, I guess my one, my one feedback here is, or thought here is maybe save yourself one muster, right? Because then you could get the mouth of Sauron and that just, that you know, clearly the game is pretty slow. Um, if you put a bunch of eyes in there and probably not moving that fast, 
Um, so I maybe I would have stopped it, stopped it three eyes, or if I was going to do four eyes, I would leave myself a muster. All right. So at this point, I'm like, okay, well, clearly I'm not going to move again. Um, I'm going to hope that next round there aren't too many eyes in there, and I'm going to go ahead and go military, see see what I can do. Um, my opponent doesn't have any musters again, and so um, I have a plan and see if you can spot it. What would you do here? Um, clearly, I attack on bar. Um, I take one, he takes one, so that's you know pretty close to average. Um, nice that I could do it with a single die. And um, shadows on Misty Mountain makes sense. That's going to be good. And um, I could try and move here. But instead, I muster an elite in Bree, and then my opponent attacks Minas Tirith again. I play Daylight here because I don't know what he's doing with the character card. Um, still gets one hit, expected to get half a hit, but gets a hit, and um, and I get only one hit, which is also a little below average. Um, so you know, I had that one great round of combat. Um, which definitely turned the tides, but then quite a few relatively poor rounds of combat. Um, but still making some progress, and my opponent cycles a card. And do they remember to draw a card? Yes, okay, they do draw a card. And I go to... I move this army into North Downs. So perhaps you can see my plan for next round. Um, but knowing that I get the first action... I'm going to... All right, so let's see what happens. He draws Black Captain's Commands and Shadow Lengthens, two great cards to have. And I um, get an Ent, which is nice. Uh, that'll give me some options. I discard Book of Mazarbul because um, while I do like the option to be able to move Strider, I want... Um, I want to keep these other cards. I'm still thinking there's a chance that the Fellowship might go for it slowly if not very many eyes are rolled. So my opponent allocates two eyes, rolls no more, and um, only gets two attacks. You'd expect three attacks, um, but these musters can turn into an attack. All right. Um, I get only two attacks. We would expect... Um, I think closer to three, right? Because what happens there? I get four, four sides have, yeah, four of my sides have attacks on them. Character, character, army, and will of the West. Um, so you'd expect me to get a little more than three attacks. So we both sort of rolled low on attacks, but I saved, um, through a day and a night. And this is, um, it's fairly rare to be able to um, keep and hold Far Harad. Um, but because of this army up in North Downs, I can actually get four victory points, two from Umbar, one from Far Harad, and one from Angmar. That's not so common because Angmar and um, Far Harad are quite hard to hold. But because my opponent got relatively few attacks it's going to be hard for them to um, take it. And by taking, by moving through it in day and night through near Harad, you do capture it. So you do take control of it because you do move onto it. And that is the same as um, Shadow Lengthens or um, Shadows Gather. So those, those rules are consistent for the extra movement. That's a, that's a little bit of a... Um, that's just great if you can capture two things with one. And this is another example of saving cards to do effects when you have a bad roll, right? Like this isn't exactly the roll that I wanted, but this Palantir lets me basically turn it into an army movement. All right, so that's that's um, certainly happy with that through a day and a night. I had saved it for a long time and got a really nice use out of it. And um, now my opponent has some problems. So... They start off by mustering... What do they start off by doing? They start off by playing Pits of Mordor. And um, they get two in Mount Gundabad and two in Moria and two in Dol Guldur. And they did draw... Um, they just drew Shadow Lengthens. And so they could have played it last time um, 
to get some of this army in Moria to um, Trollshaws, but I think they were a little worried about leaving Moria undefended. I don't know. I also wonder, could you have used the Palantir? No, it makes sense to use the muster for that because they're going to use the Palantir for Shadow Lengthens and the Palantir for Black Captain Command. So these these two cards, they just top decked. Those were Those were just great great cards to draw when they needed it. Um, so there have been a lot of examples in this game of people drawing cards right when they needed it. When I drew, um, I top decked, um, we proved the Swifter just when I needed Gandalf to get into Minas Tirith. My opponent top decked um, Cruel Weather just when they needed to push the Fellowship back. Now Black Captain commands and Shadow lengthens. So we're, we're getting some really fun, exciting card draws. And, you know, maybe, sure, they could have been drawn earlier in the game, too, so it's not necessarily that exciting, but, I mean, that is what happened in the game, and it's kind of fun that that, that can happen. Okay. Um, I'm happy to see Confusion. Confusion is a great um, card to be able to attack someplace like Angmar um, on the first round of combat when I'm only hitting them on sixes, but they have full contingent. Um, they can hit themselves and do quite a lot of damage, so I'm, I was happy to see con uh, Confusion also as an effect. All right. Um, so Pits of Mordor, that makes a lot of sense. And then while I want to save my extra attacks, um, I sort of am suspicious of, quite suspicious of Shadow Lengthens at this point, or Shadow, um, yeah, Shadow Lengthens. I forget, forget which is the move two and which is the move three, but Shadow Lengthens. Um, so I'm expecting that you know, if Shadow Lengthens happens to Trollshaws, then one attack can be to Edmores and another attack can be to Angmar. And I don't think I'm going to be able to hold that against this size. So I attack into Trollshaws. And now I'm going to have to use my, my ring to make the final attack into Angmar, but that's okay. I can do that. And... Um, I decide after all this time holding Challenge of the King, I think Challenge of the King might have been the first card. Yeah, this is the first card that I drew this game. So all along, I've been thinking almost this whole game, I'm going to play, I'm going to play Challenge of the King for the card effect, which is great because, you know, you could get, you could get eyes and particularly you can get rid of the red eye, which would be awesome. Um, I kept thinking I was going to, I was going to play that, but um, I go ahead and use Challenge of the King right here um, because I want to get rid of that unit if I can. And, you know, everything I can do to get rid of that will be good because otherwise this unit can get into Angmar. Um, presumably these units from Mount Gundabad are going to come over to Angmar. Um, but, okay. So, Sudden Strike, it worked. I had a one-third chance of it working and it did work. Um, way to go, that leader, that elephant leader. That is literally the king. Um, I guess that's Elrond, right? I don't know if he's a king of some sort, but um, certainly an important leader uh, just just did some serious things. And then you can see on the leader reroll, that leader hit. So <laughs> that leader did all of the damage in that battle, and I don't take any back, and I move everyone out of Rivendell. Um, you know, I don't like re leaving Rivendell... Um, open, but I have these musters, and so I know that I can muster um, an elven regular in there, or elite if I need to. Um, you know, it's not that I can muster enough of a defense to actually defend against these units, but if the uh, the units from Moria, but if the units from Moria come up, come up to Rivendell, then um, I'm going to win the game with my, with my military victory. He's not, he's not that far ahead. So, um, one token regular will be enough to, um, for my purposes. All right. So that was a very successful challenge of the King. I'm glad I saved it for as long as I did. It was satisfying, very satisfying use of it. Um, even though it's not what I expected. And then my opponent plays the shadow lengthen. So I feel very pleased with that defense and manages to slurp up everyone they need into Angmar. And, um, I go ahead and move armies. Um, I attack into Ettenmoors because I want to be able to merge um, the Trollshaws with North Downs if, 
you know, it just seems like Angmar is going to be too tough. Then I can just wait another round. Um, you know, this does risk this this unit from Etten Moore is getting into Angmar. It does risk that I, you know, take some damage. But I'm attacking, you know, five dice onto one. Um, that's generally the sort of odds you want. So I do it. And um, I get a hit and he doesn't, which is, you know, about what you would expect. If I had, if I had one extra attack, if I had rolled three attacks instead of only two attacks, then I would be able to merge these armies, Trollshaws into Entenmores, um, and win this round. Um, but I only have one attack left with a ring, and so I'm going to have to decide, is it worth it to go after Angmar or not? My opponent does not have any Nazgul there, and I'm still feeling pretty good about that attack. Um, seven, seven hit points against um, five with confusion and heroic death feels like I can probably do it. But Black Captain commands. So these are just great, great cards. And he brings everyone because presumably he has Dread and Despair. And he does. So um, that's a great play, right? That's He's going to lose the game if that doesn't happen. So it makes sense to do that. I mean, the other option would have been to muster first. Um, but I think I might have still gone for it. So so I like I like this move first. Um, and then, um, he saves his muster for, um, for one in Mount Gundabad and one in, um, Ingmar. And I think that makes, that makes a lot of sense. I now think, you know what, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. And I just muster a regular, uh, sorry, a leader in Westamnet so that I can use a sword if necessary to get them into Fords of Eisen. My backup plan now is Orthanc. And um, my opponent starts moving armies into Mount Gundabad, towards Mount Gundabad to defend it, because obviously that's going to be my secondary target. I do wonder, does it make sense to try and take out Farharad or Umbar? Do you want to use both movements up there? Do you want to get somebody, you know, get, get the army from Minas Tirith or the army from um, Dol Amroth just heading that way, just so they're a little closer um, if needed? All right, I use my ring to uh, merge up armies. And while I'm reluctant to give my opponent a ring, um, I want to be prepared next round because I'm probably going to need one to go to Mount Graham, one to go to Mount Gundabad, and another attack into um, Mount Gundabad to defeat it, possibly, you know, extra attacks. So using one ring now, using one ring next round, um, feels like it's worth it because he's going to end up being able to get a pretty full Mount Gundabad anyway. So giving him that extra um, muster, I don't feel too bad about. Um, so he moves armies. He merges up. Um, he merges up in Eagle's Eerie and um, Osgiliath. Now that was slightly out of order because he could have merged in Carrick and and then this army from Osgiliath would have had one would have been one farther. So that's a you know a slight a slight difference. Um, all right, so next round he he top decks day without dawn. That could be useful. Um, and I get, I will go alone in Kyrdan's ships. And I'm so happy to see Kyrdan's ships at this point because it reinforces Umbar. You can use Kyrdan's ships to reinforce Umbar. And I have exactly the right amount in the elven pool. Um, I was careful not to over muster the elves. Um, and uh, yeah, this is this has been part of my plan from, from the beginning to play to these sorts of options. Obviously, that's an awesome top deck. That's a really that's a really good top deck, but um, that's that's sort of been part of the game. If my opponent didn't have um, didn't have black captain commands or um, the one that let him uh, move to that, you know, last round would have been quite different. So we've been going back and forth on that. All right, um, I do take one automatic corruption since I didn't move it all last round, but I had sort of given up on the fellowship. Um, okay, so my opponent allocates. One eye rolls an extra one and um, moves. Now, through throughout all of this, I wonder when you know when could the mouth have shown up? The mouth could have shown up, I think, two or three turns ago. Um, I don't know how much of a difference that would have made, but um, 
you know, more dice is good. Um, there, there were musters that were needed at times, but okay. So I go ahead and, um, we, we both get pretty average rolls. Um, you know, I expect to roll three attacks. I get or a little more than three attacks. I get three attacks. He, or they expect to roll, um, uh, three attacks and get four attacks, three. I guess they expected three and a half and they get four. So that's actually above average for them. And they can get to five with the mouth of Sauron. So, or with the ring that they have. So they have five attacks available to them. And um, we discuss those odds. I do some army movements and um, with, what am I thinking? Yeah, army movement, will of the West. Yeah, just getting ready to take Mount Gundabad. So it seems very likely that he could, like basically guaranteed that he could take Far Harad. Um, but um, it'll be a lot harder for him to take Umbar because um, he just doesn't have quite enough movement. One, I'm looking at the army in Dol Amroth. One to Lamadon, one, two, three, four to Umbar, five to attack it, but it doesn't have any leaders. So if there were one leader in the um, Dol Amroth army already, then he could have, then with five actions, he could make it to Umbar and attack Umbar. Um, but he can't. So um, so he goes ahead and moves armies into Mount Gundabad and toward Umbar. And I see that if I hope to win the game... Um, while I now think for sure this army in Mount Graham could very likely take out the army in Angmar, um, my opponent will be able to retake Far Harad and I'll be at three victory points instead of four. And I need to be at four. So I have to go after Mount Gundabad or I have to go after Orthanc. Um, I obviously like Mount Gundabad better. But I'm thinking ahead a little and counting my attacks. I have one attack. I have two attacks showing. So that's enough. But if I had, um, if I get Aragorn into Umbar, then I can play Daring Defiance as a combat card, which is good in case there are mistake, in case there are tricks from Shadow, and I can play Heroic Death. So I decide to right now use one of my character dice to um, move Aragorn. Er, Strider, sorry, it's not it's not Aragorn. It hasn't been Aragorn the whole game. Um, <clears throat> So the, the thing about this is if I had saved way back when Book of Mazarbul, I could have used a muster. And so, you know, I don't think it was wrong. Um, but if I had decided sort of to give up on the fellowship a little sooner than, than I did, I might have discarded Bilbo's song. It might have been wiser to discard Bilbo's song just so that I could do this sort of shenanigan um, with Aragorn or with Strider um, in moments like this, you know. And then I would have had even more attacks. So, okay. Um, but all I did was move companions, and then my opponent brings uh, Nazgul around and thinks. Now, does anybody think to yourself, what would you do at this point? Do you, um, as free people, attack Mount Gundabad here? Or do you do something else? I have Cairdon ships. Um, I obviously don't want him to be doing more mustering into Mount Gundabad. Um, so I attack Mount Gundabad here. And, um, and my opponent says he screws up, but I don't know what's going on yet. And so um, I attack Mount Gundabad and he goes into a siege. Now, the thing that I messed up was, and my opponent messed up, was dreadful spells. So the... <clears throat> What I should have done, knowing that Dreadful Spells exists, was to play Cairdon's ships as soon as he brought Nazgul down here. Because if he, he, he gets two hits, then Aragorn doesn't die. Uh, I mean, Strider doesn't die, but he can then just walk into Umbar without any siege battle at all. Um, so, you know... That was pretty significant. And the fact that he only has three Nazgul here was was a pretty bad mistake. Um, but he misses 
and then he rolls two more just to see what would have happened, and he would have gotten one hit. So he wouldn't have... Um, it, it turned out to not be that big of a mistake, um, you know, and you expect to not, you know, get that many hits, um, five-thirds hits. So, you know, decent chances, um, but doesn't take it out. And I think anything short of taking it out um, is still going to be a pretty tough battle. So, um, all right. Uh, I use my last ring... And for my last possible attack, and get into um, try and get into Mount Gundabad. I play Confusion, and it works very well. They get very confused, and then um, I manage to eventually win the battle, um, which is which is reasonably likely. My opponent could have gotten the Mouth of Sauron um, into Mount Gundabad just to get two more leadership. Maybe that would have been worth it. Um, you know, I'm not sure what else they do with these with these musters. Um, and then I play Curtain ships here. And obviously that's going to be a really tough battle for them to win at this point. Um, they go ahead and get the mouth and then they make their attack. But, um, you know, I have daring um, defiance to cancel whatever they have. And then I have heroic death and it's just um, no contest. I'm rolling five dice to their four dice and, and that's it. We discuss briefly, um, you know, what would have happened if, um, I'll try and go a little more slowly. We have a bunch of discussion, but one of the things we try doing is what if the fellowship had tried moving? If I hadn't done all of that military stuff and I had just stayed focused on the fellowship, I would have been able to heal a bit. And um, and he shows me Day Without Dawn. So I was thinking, okay, when could I have gotten um, Aragorn? It turns out he top decked it on the last round. So I could have gotten Aragorn whenever I wanted if I had chosen to, but it never seemed like the right chance. All right, so then we just do some, um, you know, randomness to see to see what would happen. This is Challenge of the King. I get one eye, but not the red eye. And then um, this is this is sort of imagining I stayed in Pilar gear, um, and uh, just st stayed focused on the fellowship. Um, so first first tile draw is pleasant. That gets me to step one. And then step two, I get stopped. This is just sort of an example of what would have happened. I think <clears throat> odds are, odds are I probably lose this. In in this simulation, I draw um, one uh, one blue tile, the negative two, and, and then we're doing my healing and the stops. And then um, and then we're so, sort of assuming eyes are worth three. And then I get Shelob. So two red tiles and one blue tile in this run. And then I managed to destroy the ring with this sort of simulation. Now, obviously, that's just one sample. Who knows what would have happened? But that's also assuming Gollum is, Gollum is revealing. And it was something like 11 character dice to do that. So that would have been a long time. Um, I mean, the game took until turn 15. So maybe it would have been about the same. Um, but that is that game. That was an epic game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this long video. That, let's look at um, let's look at statistics. Um, remember that um, free people and uh, shadow are reversed. Uh, let me change to the proper view. Okay, there we go. So um, just remember that, that actually this is free people's player. And you can see I was minus five on sixes. This is um, the shadow player. And... Um, you can see plus 10, plus 10 on character dice, or, you know, and that's, uh, you know, can be bad if, if what you need are armies or musters. Um, so that was the game, you know, pretty relative, I would say relatively average stats, you know, minus, minus five on sixes is, is, is not great, but, um, doesn't matter that much for, for free people nearly as much as shadow. Um, that's the game. If you have suggestions or comments, I'd love to hear them. I'd be particularly curious about um, action tokens. If you have any experience with action tokens, do you agree that two is the right number? Um, I'm also curious to know about um, getting into Mordor. Would you have gone into Mordor at different times than me? And, um, and, and Aragorn, would you have tried to get Aragorn at different times than me? So that's the game. Hope you enjoyed it.